Hi everyone, it's John here, and in today's video we're going to take a look at Excel's Rich Data Type feature. So with data types, you're going to be able to take regular text data in Excel and get much more information about that data. So for example, the stocks data type is going to allow you to take a list of companies and get financial information about those companies. So let's take a look at these data types. Here I've got a list of companies, so it's just regular text data in Excel that I've typed out. And you can turn regular text data into a rich data type by going to the Data tab. And there's a section here for data types, so we've got a stock data type. So if I click on that with my list of companies selected, it's going to convert them into the rich data type for stocks. And I'm just going to expand that column. And you can tell these are different than just regular text data in Excel because they come with these little icons to the left of the cell. So my stock data types are going to have this small federal hall icon to the left there. Now, when you have a data type selected, if you right click on it, you're going to get this data type option in your menu. And those are all the commands to do with data types. So we'll take a look at all those later on. Now, once you've converted a list, if you type below that list, Excel is actually going to automatically convert uh, whatever you type in there into that particular type of data. So for example, if I type out Tesla and press enter, Excel turns that into a stock data type for me. Now Excel is going to try and find the best match available to whatever you type in or try and convert, but it doesn't always get it right. So let's take a look at an example of that. So here Excel was unable to find a match and you'll see this small question mark icon. If you click on that, it's going to open up this window pane, the data selector window pane. And here you can search for the correct data type. So let's try Microsoft and press enter. And then we'll get a list of various options. So here we can see Microsoft on the NASDAQ stock exchange and various other stock exchanges as well. So we would be able to select whichever one we wanted to and just click on the select button and we'll get our data converted into uh, the stock data type. Now let's say Excel converted my data to something, but it got it totally wrong. You can change that by right clicking on the data type and going to data type and using the change option there. That's gonna open up the data selector again. And you can search for whatever you want here. And then again, select the correct option and you'll get that changed in your sheet. One of the really cool things about these data types is the data card. So when you've converted your data into a data type, you can click on the small little icon and that's gonna open up what's known as the data card. And this is where you can see at a glance what information is in that cell. I just clicked on the little icon next to Amazon and I get this data card here and it shows a picture of Amazon's logo and various information like the price and what stock exchange that information is in and various other information. This data card also allows you to report bad data. So if you see something that's not correct, you can click on this small black flag here and give Microsoft some feedback. So the data is inappropriate, confusing, incomplete, or wrong. And the other thing you can do from this data card is extract information to the worksheet. So when you hover over one of the fields that's available, you'll notice this little button appears and clicking on that allows you to extract the information to the worksheet. So here I've just extracted the stock price for Amazon and it appears in my workbook now. 
You can also get to the data card by right clicking on the cell and going to data type and show card. And you get the same data card there. Now, if you're trying to extract data, you probably want to extract more than one cell at a time. And you can do that by selecting your range of data types. And when you do that, you'll see this little extract button here. And you can select from the various different fields here. So let's say I wanted to extract the price for each of those stocks. I can select my price. And Excel is going to extract the price for all of those stocks. Now, it's not really extracting the data. What it's actually doing is creating a formula reference to the data type cell. So if you actually select the extracted data, you'll see that it's a formula referencing the cell. So if I look up in my formula bar, I can see that I'm referencing cell B1, which is a data type that contains Amazon stock. And you can see that the formula has a dot and then the name of the field that I'm extracting from that cell. So you don't actually need to use the extract button to get the information. You can write these formulas yourself. So if I reference a data type cell and type a dot after that reference, then I can see all the available fields in the IntelliSense menu. And from there, I can extract whatever field I want and copy that formula down just like any other formula. Now, data types also come with a new Excel function that does exactly the same thing as this dot formula does. So you can use the field value function and reference a data type cell. And here, there's no IntelliSense yet. So you need to know what you want to extract and the name of the field. And that's going to also work the same way. Now with these dot formulas and the field value function, we also get a new error type in Excel and that's the field error. And that's going to show up in three different situations. So, Either you're not referencing a data type with your formula. The data you're trying to extract with your formula doesn't exist in the online service, or you're trying to extract a field that doesn't exist. So if I type out a formula that references my data type and I accidentally uh, spell price wrong, I'm going to get that uh, field error here. If I spell it correctly, but my reference isn't a data type, I'm also going to get that field error. Now these data types are actually a live connection to an online data source. And we can actually refresh this connection to get the latest data. So this is especially important for the stock data type because Information like the stock price is continually changing, so you can always get the latest uh, price or other information that's up to date by refreshing your data. So you can do that from the data tab with the refresh command. So you can refresh all or refresh. Now using the refresh command, that's just going to uh, refresh the selected data type in your workbook. But if you use refresh all, that's also going to uh, refresh other connections like uh, any queries or pivot tables that you have in the workbook. You can also select a data type and right click and go to data type and refresh from there. And that's just going to uh, refresh your data type. And you can see that uh, that's refreshed my prices there. Once your data is converted to a data type, you might want to convert it back to regular text data. And you can do that by selecting any cells and right clicking, going to data type and convert to text. And that's converted my data into regular data now. And you can see that all those uh, 
references to different fields in my rich data are now producing errors because this is no longer a data type for stock. So Excel also has a geography data type and we get the same sort of options that we just looked at with the stock data type. So we can convert uh, things like countries or states or even counties and provinces and cities into a geography data type. So up in the data tab, we can select geography. And that's going to convert all of those into a geography data type. So here, for some reason, Ireland hasn't worked. So we can click on that and select Ireland. And for geography data types, we get a little map icon. It does the same sort of thing. It shows a data card with all the available information for that uh, data type. And again, you can report and extract information to the grid and extract information from the grid with the extract button up there when you select multiple cells. And again, this is a live connection to an online data source, so you can refresh it. Though for geography data types, that information is likely to not be changing frequently. The stock data type has a little hidden feature, and that is that you can actually do currency exchange rates with the stock data type. So if you type out some currency pairs, so here I've got Australian dollars and to US dollars, Canadian to US dollars, British pounds to US dollars, and euros to US dollars. If I go up to the data tab and use the stocks data type, I can convert those into currency exchange rates and extract my price, and I get a uh, currency exchange rate from that. We can get the reverse exchange rates there by doing the same thing. So this is US dollars into another currency. And again, we can extract the price. The stocks data type also does cryptocurrency. So it can do cryptocurrency into a fiat currency. So here I've got Bitcoins to US dollars, Ethereum to US dollars, etc. I can select those and use the stocks data type and then we can extract a price there now the reverse rate going from a currency to a cryptocurrency not all of them are supported so if i convert these to a stock data type notice that i only got us dollars to bitcoins and the other ones aren't recognized also, cryptocurrency to other types of cryptocurrencies, those aren't supported yet either. So if I try and convert Bitcoin to Ethereum, that isn't recognized. Now, you don't need to use tables with data types, but you get some extra functionality when you do use tables. So if you press Control T to turn your data into a table, and then convert that data into a data type. And if you try and extract any data, notice that it creates a column header for you. So I extracted the capital from my data types and I get a column that's named capital with the extracted data in it. And notice that anywhere that I have my active cell, as long as it's in the table, I still get this extract to grid button and I can extract all the information I want. Now this is going to work regardless of whether your data is in a table or not, but if you add uh, filter toggles, sort and filter toggles to your data, so you can do that by going to the data tab and using this filter icon here to turn on or off filter, sort and filter toggles. If you're filtering or sorting a uh, data type, so here's my country field and all those are data types. If you use the sort and filter toggles, you get this 
uh, select field option here. And that's gonna allow you to sort or filter your data based on one of the, the uh, rich data fields in your data type. So you don't need to extract the information from your data type in order to sort or filter based on that field. So I haven't extracted the population, but I can still select population to sort and filter based on. And then I can do things like sort the country based on population from smallest to largest. And that sorts it. So we can see Canada has the smallest population, then Mexico and United States. And we can also filter out items based on one of those fields. So for example, population, you can see that we get the population listed here in the filter area. And we can do different number filters or just filter things here manually. So, so let's say I wanna see countries that are greater than 40 million in population. Press OK, and then I'm just left with Mexico and the United States. Now, if you have a workbook and it contains data types, or you want to find out if it does contain data types, you can do that from the File tab. And the only way I know how to do this is by going to the Info section, and we can check for issues, and we're going to check compatibility. So. So data types are not available in Excel 2016 or previous versions. So they're gonna show up in this compatibility checker. And we can just focus in on Excel 2016 to reduce the number of compatibility issues. And you can find all the different data types in your workbook by finding items that say, this workbook contains data types. And you'll also get a hyperlink. So you can click on the find hyperlink. That's gonna take you to where those data types are and highlight them for you. So those are rich data types in Excel. They help you to get more information from your text data for uh, stocks or geography type of data. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the thumbs up button. That's it for this video. We'll see you guys next time.